Let's get in here with Bill King from Nashville Sports Radio, hosts Monday through Friday, 6 to 9, and the king of college football talk. Usually gives us some of his time on Wednesday. We always appreciate that. Bill, how are you today? Hey, guys. Good to be with you. Well, we are uh, glad to have you. Always glad to have you, Bill. And um, just, you know, look through your Twitter feed, and a few days ago you're picking uh, the Aggies and the Razorbacks as the potentially the best game of the weekend. CBS certainly knew that. Um, and we're, you know, nine straight losses for Arkansas against Texas A&M since they joined the SEC. And it really feels right now, and I mean, some people have said they, Arkansas's got a puncher's chance. I feel they've got better than just a puncher's chance in this game. What, what do you think about this matchup Saturday? Yeah, I got that one. One Wisconsin, Notre Dame, two. I I, I agree with you. I uh, I think Arkansas right now is playing better. Uh, A&M's offense is bogged down, and uh, that's going to be a problem, I think, in this game. I like I like Arkansas's chances. I don't think it's it's a you didn't use the term wild punch, but I don't think it's a puncher's chance. I think it's a legit, straight up, winnable game for Arkansas. Well, when, when, all right. So, if, when you, I know you watched the Texas game. It's not that you really needed to watch very much <laughs> about the Georgia Southern game. With this offense right now, having KJ Jefferson and his threat of running on on almost any play, and Sam Pittman has talked about this. You know, it 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 freezes the defense on the outside for about half a second, then it makes a huge difference for this running attack. And I think going into this season, Bill, a lot of folks thought, look, you, you're losing a quarterback in Felipe Franks who was steady and moved it down the field nicely and set a school record in completion percentage. And I know Felipe ran for like 111 yards last year against Texas A&M, but what Jefferson adds to this offense, man, I mean, it's, it's unique, I think, in the SEC with his ability to run in that size and his arm strength. There's something about KJ that, that feels unique in this league. Big quarterback, athlete, can run. And not only that, but I think the offensive line at Arkansas is playing probably as good as anybody in the league. And Alabama had some struggles, as you saw, once that game got going, once they were up 21-3 to in the Florida game. O-line, a uh, couple positions. They've got their center out of place right now. they got a right tackle that they're, they're worried about at Alabama. Arkansas tackle to tackle, shoulder to shoulder on the offensive line, I think is playing as well as it thought. I wouldn't disagree with you, Bill. And you know, you bring up the well, Florida, what they were able to do, come back against Alabama. Do you think that they have the talent and they can actually compete with Georgia in the East? I didn't. That that <laughs> that was an eye opener right there. I still think Georgia. I think Georgia's playing probably the most complete football of any team in the country right now. And they still don't have several of their bigger-name mm-hmm. weapons, like Pickens and a big tight end, Darnell Washington, still not playing. And it's impressive. They found a lot of new weapons there, and quarterback position has been very good. They're not real excellent, let me say, at the cornerback position right now. That's a bit of a worry for them. I still think Georgia's better than Florida in the cocktail party down the road, but it is a better matchup. You're 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 on to something. It's a better matchup than I would have thought a week mm-hmm. ago. Oh, it's definitely and, and guys, the other thing is Emory Jones was not playing all that well and he played mm-hmm. quite well in that, that game, that Alabama game. Yeah, it definitely uh they've shot up the board as far as my mind for how well that they were able to compete against Bama. And after the weekend, you heard a lot of different opinions on is what Florida did kind of exposing Alabama good for the SEC or, or kind of bad because I some people view it as, hey, Florida just gave us a blueprint. I kind of view it as Florida just pissed Nick Saban off. That's not good for anybody. Do you, do you think that there was more of a showing of how to beat Bama, or did it just make Saban mad and now everything's going to get ironed out and they're going to be as unstoppable as unstoppable as we thought they were coming into the year? Nobody sells issues, problems better than Nick Saban to their team. There's nobody even in his universe. And, again, they were up big on Miami and then didn't do much in the second half. What did he say? It was a 17-16 game. And mm-hmm. Miami's not as good as Florida. But this is a sales point for his team. They've got, they've got a couple of 
offensive line issues that they can solve, they're they're also not playing their best running back. They're playing a guy that's been around a long time, Brian Robinson, number four, who's good, but he's not their best back. They've got younger backs better than him. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've got a couple of problems on defense, notably linebacker right now that's giving them some trouble and a safety position. But, Nick, look, they've recruited so well there. The other thing is, is a lot of people are down on the defensive coordinator, Pete Gold. He has not been real popular among the fan base. Not that they have a say in anything, but there's been a question mark about how he has really done for that side of the ball the last couple of years as their coordinator. Bill, it, it, doesn't it feel like there's an opening for somebody else? You know, for for the college football playoff to not be so full of chalk as as it has been in the last few years. I mean, it, Alabama maybe looks vulnerable. Clemson, they're going to beat themselves. Clemson is vulnerable, even though the, the you know they may still run through the rest of the ACC. The loss to Georgia, I think, ends up costing them. Ohio State vulnerable. Um, Oklahoma looks vulnerable too. You know, I mean. There's an opening this year, maybe for more than one or even two teams to get to that playoff in a, you know, a place we haven't been in that for a long time. It's less chalky in the moment than it's been. That's true. That is true. Clemson's total issue is offense. And what's shocking is they don't look to have any answers with playmakers. They, they, they don't have any secret weapon that has yet to run out there and dominate. And remember, they didn't run the ball that well last year with Travis Etienne, a, a All-American running back. And now they're not as good there. They're playing a, a five-star true freshman, a Charlotte kid. Uh, but he's not quite ready. And uh, the quarterback play has been iffy. The receiver play, there's just not a lot of playmakers. Now, their defense, Clemson's defense, is nasty, wicked. Well, I'd say other than Georgia, it's probably the best defense I've seen this year. Ohio State's got issues everywhere. The defense, the defensive scheme, the quarterback, he's put up a whole lot of yards, but he's inconsistent in his passing game. Now, they just unleashed the number one running back in the class of 21, the Trayvon Henderson, and he went for, what, 270 in that last game. So the running back, they just upgraded for sure, but they've got issues. And Oklahoma, uh, Spencer Rattler is not playing anywhere near a prohibitive favorite to be the Heisman winner. Not even I wouldn't put him on the list right now, probably. And uh, they're not better defensively like we were told. So there, there are two big games next week that will have a lot to do with you know the way the playoff ends up shaking out. And, and, and in those games, two teams that are involved in them have bye weeks this week. Ole Miss gets to rest before they go take on Alabama. Cincinnati gets to rest before they travel to South Bend. And it's just feel, it feels like, you know, if there are openings there, Cincinnati beats Notre Dame, maybe Ole Miss figures out Alabama. But that's next week. But, I mean, there you go. These two teams that they get a chance to rest for, you know, their biggest games of the season. No, no question. And uh, Notre Dame's got to play Wisconsin up in Chicago this Saturday. That'll be by far the best game they've seen to date. Cincinnati will then be the best team that they've seen. Notre Dame's got all kinds of problems. Offensive lines getting killed. Toledo's defensive front pushed around Notre Dame's offensive line. Defense played a little bit better against Purdue. Passing game's gotten better. But Notre Dame, I wouldn't. And I'm a Notre Dame aficionado, guys. I, I, if I had a vote, which I don't and I don't want one, I wouldn't vote him in my top 25 mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's saying a lot. I mean, especially if when you you talk about what Notre Dame is and how they've yeah been you know just the the name presence of it all and you know Notre Dame just feels like they belong there in that category every single year. They're but, they're ranked right now on brand alone. Yeah. It has nothing that goes to show you how much people take into account what they actually see. I mean, it's the same thing with preseason polls. I mean, we see you know your your Texases and, and Notre Dames and. Um, USC's every single year being uh, over-evaluated and, and being put on a pedestal just from brand alone. But since we're talking about the CFP kind of being a little bit more open, these are two brands. But who has who do you think is more likely out of these two 3-0 and teams thus far to make a run at the CFP? Is it Oregon out of the Pac-12, or is it Michigan 
to finally get over Ohio State and be the Big Ten representative? Michigan is impressive. Now, really hadn't played anybody to uh, punch back. Washington's not very good. That, that win's not as, not as good as the brand would tell us it should be. Mm-hmm. I'd probably say Oregon. Now, there's one little issue here. Southern Cal just woke up, maybe. They switched quarterbacks due to an injury. Jackson Dart, who was a big West Coast uh, quarterback recruit, and when Keaton Slovis went down, they put him in, and he played really well. Oh, yeah. And they were losing, I believe, to Washington State 40, uh, 14 to 7 at the time. Then they blew him out. And Clay Helton's gone, as we know. And it looked like, in one game, guys, so I want to be hesitant, but it looked like that whole team loosened up and played free and played up to their ability. If that is indeed a trend, Oregon has another issue on their hands. So you just mentioned USC, and they made you know the, the, the biggest coaching change of the season so far just by yeah. getting rid of Clay Helton. It, 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 feels, it feels like Florida State may be on that same – on that same path at some point. I'm hearing I mean, I'm feel hearing like Mike's gonna make it. A totally divided locker room there and uh it's uh, it it gets uglier every week for Florida State and Mike Norvell. The only issue is and yeah, he inherited a, a, a nothing roster from Willie Taggart. But the only issue is they just ran a guy before two years yeah. and had to pay him off. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I think he gets a third year no matter what, unless there's just some scandal that's on the front page of every rag in the, in the world. I think they give him another year, and, unless they get a call from somebody who you know is a difference maker behind the scenes. I just, I just think they're forced to. And I don't know that they've got the money. If indeed they have to pay him off, he's still got four years after this year at about $4.5 million a pop. After play, paying off Willie Taggart and the assistants, yeah, they're, they're, I, Florida State's got a pretty big budget, but that's just way too many coaches to be playing. But plus, you're gonna have to pay the new guy to come in. So honestly, oh. they almost forced their hand to stay, unless you know they kind of conduct something behind the scenes, like we we've kind of seen uh, at some other programs to get out of paying to get that pay without pay with clause type of thing, or get out of paying without clause and. One program that I think's kind of been uh, done that recently is Tennessee. And I want to ask you more importantly about the schedule release of Tennessee and the reaction of paying extra 100 k to get rid of Army and replace them with Akron. How has that been received uh, with the scheduling news coming out yesterday? I mean, I've only seen people tweet about it. And um, obviously... I'm assuming they don't want to have to prepare for what Army brings you, which is a brutal triple option and a bunch of guys who would rather die than than give up or lose a ball game. Mm-hmm. Heck, Tennessee would probably be an underdog against them. Think about the contrasting styles to a play offensively between one and the other. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're catching some heat from fans and media about it, et cetera. Uh, they don't want to that, – whoever the defensive coordinator is at that time doesn't want to be – preparing for that offense mm-hmm. i'm assuming well we'll leave it there uh appreciate your time as yeah, always yeah. enjoy the games this weekend and uh we'll, we'll do it again next week as long as you got the time okay. appreciate you man appreciate it thanks bill bill king nashville sports radio uh you might be looking for a new job new career maybe something that's more than just a job you might want to become an emt or a paramedic if you have the passion to help others you want the opportunity to work with an involved team and learn from the best Baxter Regional Medical Center can assist you in becoming an EMT in one semester. Paramedic, it takes three to four semesters, and you can get complete certification or degree without student loan debt. If you're looking for more than just a job, Baxter Regional Medical Center has the opportunity right now. You can go to baxterregional.org for more information on all available positions, or you can call them 870-508-1883. Going to wrap halftime up after the break. Stay with us.
We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back to start another football season. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the college and pro football action this season. With a new updated side and interface, and even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything college football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. 